I would love to welcome everybody here. Thank you for your attendance. I'm going to acknowledge the country that we're all on. We're on Aboriginal land in Australia where people cared for the land and the air and the waters for thousands of years. European invasion stole that land from its custodians and since that time have destroyed the habitats of much life. Colonialism has severely impacted the lands of Asia where Friends Peace Teams is working. Let us resolve to work for peace and justice wherever we are. And now by way of introduction, I'm going to ask who has done AVP? Could you just wave your hand if you've done some AVP? Okay. And the second question, who has supported Friends Peace Teams in any way? Thank you, all of you. So I'll hand over to Kins. I think it's a very good time to just be in silence. And try to feel the spirit within and among us. And thank you, everyone. And I pass it to Valerie. Why are we meeting this evening? We have been offered session, and I gladly agreed because our report, which is in documents in advance, has some requests to make of individuals and meetings in Australia Yearly Meeting. We just want to have a look at this document a little bit in advance tonight. We, that is Friends Peace Teams, seek a greater involvement in our work with Australian Friends and support is not necessarily financial, but it's friendship and care and understanding each other and we're going to show you some pictures of some Australians visiting Asia, um, visiting our work. And our workers, our peace workers, do ask about our work for peace in Australia. So it's reciprocal. We'd love to know more about what they're doing, but they want to know how does our testimony, our work for peace, we have working group monthly meetings and they're a way of closer involvement, but there are many other ways, particularly of supporting one or two of our peace workers. And now I'll hand over to Kins who will talk about our peace workers and what they do. Thank you, Valerie. And perhaps if we can share some of the screens for just to enliven what is really happening and what's going on it would be great for us at friends peace teams a peace worker is a person who for a very long time has attended and joined the alternatives to violence project and has become a facilitator and has joined some of our special topics and who has a special calling to be a peace worker and when that person will say i want to be a peace worker they get to be supported by the friends peace teams and most of the time these peace workers get in touch and are able to to travel with and be able to have a relationship with many of the quakers even with the many of the Australian Quakers, as we have seen earlier in our website. In Friends Peace Teams, we say we are not really looking for work, but it's supposed to be an infrastructure wherein the ministries get supported and gets highlighted, and we get to meet peace activists in action in their very own communities. So I would like to invite you to look into our website, and that's what it is, um, friendspeaceteams.org slash AWP, because we are present all over the globe. And we are also very happy and very much happy and indebted to Holy Dines, because once in a while, our news gets into the streamlines, and that is really very good. And back to you, Valerie, and maybe the next slides will be on while Valerie will be talking I'm talking. But I am going to move now on to regional meetings in Australia. 
And there's a very great disparity in awareness and financial support between the regional meetings. We have our treasurer, Jane Drexler, in Tasmania, and she is able to advise me on the giving by friends. We have an annual journal called Peaceways, and I'm very keen to get it to all of the people who are giving to us. And it would be handy if you could send us an email when you have donated or some other way. But I so far haven't been able to work that one out. Now, why do we need money? We pay stipends to some of our peace workers. Some of them are still volunteers. But we're aware that these barely cover their living costs. Some workers are getting close to retirement and have few resources to sustain them. There's the picture of Peace Place and that's the building at Party. Do you want to just show a couple more slides, Kins? Yeah, this is in Surakarta in Solo, like two hours ride from where we are. And Rati is has just planted a peace library there. There are two peace libraries that she is supporting. One is right inside a mosque and another one is in a neighborhood. Another another one that we are supporting. The next slide is West Papua. And most of the activities are held inside an orphanage and these are kids that are that manage to run away in safety while their parents are still at war and suffering very much inside the jungle some of them are into that situation others have run away to escape even marriage and it is being said that these children the attitude and the behavior of these children has changed tremendously after they have been doing power of goodness the next one we are also supporting Raisa in Bantayan Island in the Philippines she just opened a learning space out there allowing the children to read to do language to be able to read stories and books in their own language and at the same time appreciate the heritage that they have as fisher folks and living in an island sometimes it's not the connotation of being in an island sounds so backward to some people but it's just a way to lift them up and, and to be there for themselves as beautiful people that that's in my learning space and the next one is is still in the philippines and that's my task to spread peace and and support the new leadership and also communities um, for justice and peace all over the philippines and the next one, we hold every year a regional justice and peace training. And it's a way of lifting up the new, the emerging leadership and also boosting the morale of people who are in very, very difficult situation. The person on the right is really, has really lived in Myanmar. He's from Myanmar, the one holding the speak outs sign is also from Myanmar. Now he is somewhere else seeking himself in safety. There are other people here. The one in stripes is a young person from the Philippines. Behind him, Ben from Samoa. So it's a very good opportunity to bring people who are committed to justice and peace together and learn from each other. This is what Valerie is trying to say, that this is what support is in one way. It's not just financial support, but at the same time, it's just the way of saying, I will be there. I will be present. I'm going to listen to you and be there. How grateful we are to the Thanksgiving Fund who have uh, helped with money for fairs and for the training at Peace Place. Every year it gets stronger. Our networks just keep growing. The other thing I would love to emphasize is it's wonderful for young people. And this year we've got Shannon Ormiston and Vita from Victoria AVP uh, who are attending the regional training. I've just got so much confidence in those two people as well as Annette, uh, who is here, that they will bring back more life into AVP in Victoria, as well as as Friends Peace Teams. So each person that 
that comes amongst us is a friend and we build on those friendships. So now I'm coming up to what is actually in the report. And there are a whole series of suggestions, like our advices and queries. I put in, firstly, that we ask regional meetings to discuss ways in which their members, individually or in groups, could establish ways of becoming involved in Friends Peace Teams. Recently, Victoria AVP hosted a session with Peace Place with the two Nanak and Petrus. So the people from Victoria AVP learnt about the work of Peace Place. And in Queensland, we earlier this year hosted a Myanmar Friends Peace Teams session so that friends could learn the extreme difficulties of peace workers in Karen land, which is on the border of Thailand. But before that, we have um, had Korea. We've had the work of, on Jeju Island of opposition to the American naval base. And we've also had peace libraries. Regional meetings are always looking for topics to show their the friends. That is one where our workers are more than willing. They're so happy to join with a regional meeting and do a session after meeting sometime or any other time. We're going to have questions and, and things afterwards, so hold that one if you've got an idea there. Your newsletters. We publish about twice a week good news stories about uh, our work. Sometimes I send these to Holly Dines and she puts them in to Streamlines. But if there's something that really appeals to you, it's another way of getting our stories to your regional meeting friends. So think about that and suggest to your editors that they consider putting in these stories. The third thing that we're recommending we're asking people to write peace stories. Some of you might have seen the Power of Goodness book that's got stories that come from Europe. We're using these in Asia. They're very effective in getting people to just seize on what are the simple things that make for peace. I've had a go at this. I've written a story about a conscript soldier in Myanmar and what he went through. It hasn't been accepted and it may need to be changed considerably. But if you can think of any good news stories, perhaps with an Indigenous people in Australia, or if you've had an experience in Asia that you'd like to write about, we're going to collect our new power of goodness for Asia West Pacific. It might take a little while. I mean, this is where I'm saying there's so many different things you can do to help to work with us. Next one I've got is, um, well, it's, it relates to the first thing. We've got a lot of videos there, mostly on our website. Show one of these videos at one of your regional sessions, regional peace and justice sessions. I want to acknowledge the work of Adrian as secretary of FWCC. Asia West Pacific section in his uh, his work to bring together the work of international peace from Australia's perspective. And recently I was on a, a Zoom with QSA who have a similar wish. They've got a new head, a new manager, and um, QSA is also looking to somehow work with others uh, like FWCC and like Friends Peace Teams or any any other Quaker international group. The lastly, Friends School, when we do presentations, people say, have you thought about Friends School? Because they have friends in residence. I'd like to speak with them about the possibility of kins or another peace worker spending some time with the, with the students at all different levels and to help them know what, what our work is all about. So they're the recommendations that 
came in that are in documents in advance. And now I'm going to throw it open to you and please give us some of your ideas or suggestions that we could carry our work further. Hello, Adrian. Uh, hi. I, I don't know whether this is uh, helpful, but um, I think that the work of Friends Peace Teams is amazing, but I don't think it's necessarily understood or or how it's perceived within Australia Uni meeting. I've got a feeling that the distance people, that, that there's a kind of assumptions made and your videos and your are uh, very important for helping Australian friends deepen our experience of friends peace teams. It just has been, a, uh, for a long time, it was something new and beginning and distant, but now with Zoom and videos, and uh, I think you can uh, bring us much closer. So the idea of regional meetings, one of the possibilities I think you're looking at is is just having someone from friends peace teams speak to a regional meeting mm -hmm. you say at a at a uh, business meeting you could have somebody and just create uh, a sense of immediacy about it and also i don't think avp does it justice i think it's avp with a certain attitude style experience process that might be well beyond what Australian friends are used to when they do community uh, AVPs. It tends to be a lot more individualistic, whereas I think there's a strong community and movement building element to your work. So I think there's a little bit of a gulf still for people to understand what your work is and truly how amazing it is. Can you suggest any further ways that that might happen? Well, I think I think having people, I, I think the idea of travelling in the ministry is a strong one. Mm -hmm. The idea of having people uh, join a meeting for worship for business online, you know, you can join a meeting for worship for business online and maybe have a five-minute presentation. Uh, you your videos can be uh, shown or inserted so it needs some champions within regional meetings I think to help set that up but I also think I, I think the other thing that's not really understood if I could say is that I, I think you teach Quakerism really well my experience of the peace building is that you actually teach Quaker processes in a very clear well thought out uh, non-pushy way but you know, you, people are taking up these skills. They don't have to know that they're Quakerly. But I think that we have in, a, in Australia things to learn from Friends Peace Teams about how to reach out to young people and offer to them Quakerism. And so uh, it's not just about what we can do for Friends Peace Teams, but I, I, if you can find out more about the courses and the sessions they run, they are actually really insightful about our Quakerism in ways I think we tend to just sort of mumble a bit about it and apologise and say it can't be taught and it's a bit difficult. They just do it really straightforwardly in a very free way that's uh, that's not imposing. So I think there's that other gesture to us as well. And that's something you've experienced in your yourself and are about to go back to more of yeah. that. Experience. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just like often at a Friends Peace Teams meeting, you'll start by stopping <laughs> and it will be explained why you're stopping. Well, we would say, shall we have some silent worship? But what Friends Peace Teams does is it says, well, let's stop and there'll be some reasons why we should stop and the, what benefits there are. And then from that express teaching after stopping, we'll move into the meeting and the meetings are always better because of the stopping. That's a really simple example of how straightforward uh, they teach Quakerism. So I, I don't know whether Kins is willing to run workshops for us, but I, I just think there are things for us to learn about the way that you teach. Kins, comment? One of the comments that we have, I know that AVP, for example, we are very strong at saying we shouldn't proselytize and even the Quakers 
are very strong at it. But we in Asia, my friends who are Muslims, Mennonites, Catholics, Protestants, we don't see it that way. We see it as to practice listening to the inner voice and to be joyful at it because it's very important for us to listen to the inner voice. It makes us more available and prepared to our communities. These are in many ways have been explained by the peace workers. I feel it's very quick early <laughs> and practiced among the peace workers in Asia, which has very, very big and strong traditions in terms of spirituality and religion. And I mm -hmm. often rejoice at it when we say, let's stop and discern what's really true, right and true and just. So these are things that we use in everyday vocabulary. People would say, yes, it's quicker, but it's a universal truth that we need to listen to our inner voice and to embody this power of life. And that's the transforming power. And do it not just in ourselves in a very silent way, but embody it and share it in the community and even ask for the communities to do so. That's how we do it among us. That's the strength, I think, of Friends Peace Teams. We don't apologize that we listen to the inner voice, listen to what is right and true, and ask ourselves if it is true. Ask ourselves, demand for authenticity, and, and that's it. And with this, the young people understand, oh, that's the way to discern. That's the way to listen to the truth. And that's why I need friends. Young people needs actually strong and clear-minded examples. The young people in the Philippines last year told me, we like it that Adrian came because he is such a good example of what it is to be a friend. This is relationship, right? This is how we benefit from one another. I soon listen to most of the many young people doing their discernment. She can say something about that, but that is really because they've got it. They got it right. We don't need to say, we don't need to lecture. We just say, okay, let's practice together. Let's do it together. And then they can configure, oh, that's how it is. And they go back to their own groups and share it with their groups according to how much they have learned and benefited from it. Thank you. Thank you, Kins. Inviting others to contribute questions or comments, suggestions. Annette would like to say something. I think at this time when study of religion and religious education is becoming a smaller and smaller part of a children's educational curriculum. We need to be showing them how children can meet together and learn these peaceful lessons. They're not there in the classroom as much as they were years ago. They're so busy doing this rope learning to the compass there, that test that they go through, you know, the IELTS, not the IELTS, the, the socialising and the learning about social skills, kindness, caring for others and all that, which is what was taught in, in the religious education. Mm -hmm. It's not taught as much. They're not, Tell us they're, what it's like in party, Annette. What what, do you, oh. what have you noticed? What's different? With the children. Oh, it's beautiful. Teachers are so mindful of the children not to be arguing. They just seem to be so in tune with being polite to each other. Like some, And they've got a lot of boys here. It's amazing how they can keep all these young boys under control <laughs> in a quiet way because, you know, Young boys are immature, <laughs> and the three quarters of the class is boys. You know, one minute they're going like this, and the next minute the teacher goes, "No, no words, no anger," and then the next minute they're shaking hands. The same one that's gone like this before. <laughs> they learn very quickly that's not acceptable and not the right way to go about things. They mm -hmm. really are. It's it's just such a such a joy to behold seeing. So happy that you're there and you're and, part of it now, aren't you? And music. It's like Montessori. 
really. They had a beautiful, all the bamboo musical instruments the other day. Oh, and teachers go, mm, and they go that, and, they, and they're taking their turns. They're very good at taking turns and waiting patiently. It's lovely to see, really lovely to see. Thanks very much for sharing, Annette. Yeah. It was really good. Now, anyone from Australia, what could you do in your meeting? Can you see an opening there? And say, to me, part and parcel of what we have in front of us and right now is the ability to communicate so well across the globe instantaneously with this godlike technology that we're just working through right now. Valerie, you early on, you mentioned Holly Dines, our new Quakers Australia communication and publicity manager. And I think she is a gift to Quakers Australia <laughs> from God herself. She is amazing, right? And I want to remind friends yearly meeting on Tuesday, the 9th of July. Uh, Holly will be holding a share and tell at noon Australian Eastern Standard Time or 11.30 in Adelaide, a share and tell about newsletters and essentially how we are communicating with each other. Now, I'm going to drop the calendar into the chat here. And friends will be able to see the calendar in that calendar on Tuesday at 11.30 South Australian time. There is a share and tell session, QA newsletters. And if you click on what is this, then you'll see a, a Zoom link. And that session from Holly Dines will be held hybrid. So it will be people in the Baku room in Adelaide, but anybody across the world who can come in and participate in how we are communicating with each other. And I think that is a very important way forward. So thank you. Thank you. Early on, asked Holly to put in regular stories, which are published on our email list, and she's joined Friends Peace Teams so that she can she can do that herself. But come on, regional meetings. We've got Tasmania, we've got New South Wales, we've got West Australia, Queensland. Any thoughts you'd like to try? Can you run it past us now? Yes, Tai Su. Some years ago, I took my grandson to Ramadan celebration and children were having great time. They were not eating anything much, but they are running around. When we were coming home, my grandson said, uh, it was the best party. And Noni, you know what? The girl with the scarf on, she ran faster than any boys. And I thought uh, that she, he will always remember the girl with the scarf on can run very fast. <laughs> Unfortunately, the members of that uh, group organizing the uh, celebration. After he moved to Perth, nobody continued. And I feel really sad because uh, there was one venue gathering, so many children, you know, get together. So I'm just going back what uh, Kins was uh, saying, that it is a blessing, those countries, many different faiths and the religious practice live together. And I think that's a one way really get to know and respect and work together. Worshipping group we have in Toomba is a very small worshipping group, but we have been going on for a long, long time, and only 10 of us. Just listening uh, to your friends, uh, I have been thinking. Uh, actually, Valerie came over and talked about the friend peace team. And then after that, also I shared uh, Sally's. Uh, experience, uh, try to get orphanage from where she lives by bus. She misses bus, bus doesn't come sometimes, and Australian friends uh, managed to, to uh, uh, buy her uh, motorbike. And now she doesn't have to waste so much uh, time. She just gets on the bike and she goes. What I have been thinking just now, 
I'm going to ask uh, my worshiping group members if uh, we could, uh, as a gift, uh, petrol money. Yeah, that's choosing something, something doable. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm suggesting, that all of us put our thinking caps on. What's a little thing? And so, I'm glad you brought up about children. I wonder if, if you have a children's meeting, if we could twin that with one of our preschools or peace libraries and get the children without the same language but somehow interacting? Is that a possibility? Well, there is actually a new school started at the Pure Land, bilingual, they call it bilingual school in Chinese and English. And I'm going to approach one of the venerables there who I really respect very much. If somehow they can open their school for, you know, now and then, invite uh, children from other schools. I was just reflecting after listening to you, Kins and Adrian, that um, sometimes there's a lot to be said for just having conversations at our regional meeting. For some reason, in my experience, a lot of us kind of can get a bit siloed, you know. It's like I'm interested in QSA or I'm interested in AVP or I'm a peace activist. It's like, you know, everyone's in these little silos sometimes in terms of their self-identity. I don't really understand it. And that's probably not a problem You've seen so much, Kins. I'm not sure what it is, but it's that bit like this is how I feel about myself, this kind of when there's so much, whenever I do get involved with anything very occasionally with Friends Peace Teams, I'm just so inspired and learn so much in terms of people's resilience and the way they work in community. We've all got so much to learn. And, I mean, moving forward in terms of climate change and so many issues, those friendships and those relationships are going to just be so critical. So thank you for everything you do. I feel that the, the Asian communities have much more community-mindedness than we do, and that's what um, brings them together so strong, that they work together so well. When I've seen in Malaysia, I've seen here, and even Papua New Guinea, the different communities, they work well together. They work as a team. The Friends Peace Teams is, is an organisation, but the Quakers' way of supporting grassroots diplomacy we call it if ever anyone who does justice and peace even if you're not attending the working group meetings or paying much attention to us you can share what you are doing and that's also very inspiring to us to know that all oh, the Australians are doing this. The regional meeting in this particular place is starting a library or I don't know what you are starting. That's one thing that would also, like, it can be a mutual way of inspiring one another. And I also would like to invite friends that for this year, we are going to have a virtual Friends Peace Teams World Global Gathering. And the query is, what sustains us in the face of war and violence? It is an open call and again, inviting regional meetings and yearly meetings to join. We will be sharing and inviting you friends and this a way of sending out messages and sharing our thoughts about it it's not about creating or recreating another group but you can even like oh this is what we've been doing for justice and peace and for this time i think it's worth thinking about i'll be advertising that extensively it's not till november we're working on having involved of Australian and New Zealand friends and other yearly meetings in our area, Adrian. That, that will be a very important event later this year. One thing that Friends Peace Teams is showing leadership on is around peace libraries and yeah. they have a special meaning uh, where you are. It's happening slowly for us here in Fremantle, but one thing we can do as a local meeting is approach our local library with a syllabus, a reading list of what we think is a peace library. And I think that Friends Peace Teams, Asia West Pacific, may be able to help advise us. Two-way relationship, and there's a lot of wisdom gathering by a lot of young people who are at the front line of communal violence or tensions or you know, positive initiatives, and they're doing things that will make us wise if we listen to them. And I think their peace libraries 
could be a really good way for us to go to our local library and say, here's a list of books. Can you curate them in a particular place or can you highlight them, promote them uh, for parents or for young people? Libraries have, a, um, have special events, don't they? Maybe a Saturday morning piece, morning tea could be held for parents and children in the Fremantle Library if you get that going. We can help with the list of piece titles. There's a committee in the US that can send that. They're called the Sparklers. Actually, there is a hidden gem that has been started by Australian Quakers, and that is directly just coming up every month to support the Friends in Karen Land in Myanmar. They are called the Support Group of Kui. There are like five people for two hours in a month. They listen to how Kui, Kui, Kui is the peace worker in Karen land. And we listen. And very simply, like we take turns. Who's going to write the news this time? Just being a springboard of ideas and just be there. Just be present. And I can already feel how Kui has changed his perspectives mm-hmm. and he has has been very responsive at us, not because we give him money. We just give him 450 Australian dollars per month. It's not even enough to feed how many families. Maybe not even enough to feed 10 families. But it's about friendship. And it's about him being comfortable in thinking about and asking out loud his fears and his questions. Is it not, Valerie? You you forgot forgot to share that. that. That group yeah. of five, and now I know him better. I've got better questions to ask of him, but they, in such a difficult situation with bombs raining, raining down and they can't live in their buildings, they have to hide in the jungle. Yes, as Ken's is saying, you can set up a listening group with any of our workers so they can just talk and you can ask them questions. If you like, I, you know, we can send you their email addresses or we can help set that up get your thinking caps on i'm going to yearly meeting in person talk to me anytime and we're now going to for our closing i'll hand over to kins for our closing we are going to share a video i'm so excited about peace and creating good relationships because i really believe peace 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 is possible. Peace is possible for us. Damayan itu pasti. Damayan itu mungkin. Can Dora Wolamul, Opsa Wolamul, Wenelo That's from Patty. <laughs> I'm going to ask if everyone could just say one word for closing something that's occurred to them. Bridges. Creating. Loving. Listening. Friendship. Learning. Joy. Hope. Passion. Hope. Love. Peace for children. Go in peace, friends. Thank you. Good night.